In the two years since the Golden Ray flipped on its side with more than 4,000 vehicles on board, the massive cargo vessel has been the subject of all sorts of investigative. The following day, the U.S. Coast Guard rescued four people who were trapped on board for a full day. Very dramatic, but they did get them all. That's right. Then signs of environmental issues like oil slicks washing up on shore leaking out during the removal process. Then came the fire earlier this summer as crews tried to uh, salvage the ship, a source of frustration and a topic of much debate. Now it's the subject of a documentary film. On your side, Sam Schindler spoke with the film's creators about a project that, much like the cleanup itself, is taking a lot longer than expected. We should have bought a house. Yeah. <laughs> like everything about the disaster plagued ship. All right, here's pretty cool. Jordan Bellamy says the timeline for their documentary proved overly optimistic. Originally, in our minds, this was a two month project. The Nashville based filmmakers. Yeah. That was good stuff, too. Were yeah. first inspired by the ship when Josh Gilligan saw it on a Christmas visit to St. Simon's. And I was honestly giddy, like on the pier, like. Oh, there's a, there's a capsized ship out there. Gilligan's been fascinated by shipwrecks long before the Golden Ray capsized. Yeah, I've always been drawn to disaster. <laughs> but as the timeline expanded, so has their story. It's multifaceted. Ship is almost a sort of Trojan horse to be able to tell interesting stories of the people that live on this island. The looming ship, now a feature of the horizon, pushes tragedy and absurdity into the same frame. I mean, people come and see the ship and they're wondering, is this an oil rig? Is this, uh, is this a new hotel? I mean, maybe there's a casino out here. Potentially even the sort of Stockholm syndrome of like, I'm gonna miss it when it's gone. So massive, it's difficult to comprehend. Something the filmmakers say is a reflection of the current moment. It's like the image of what we've been able to grow comfortable with as a society sometimes. We think that's a story uh, that I, I think people will resonate with whether or not they have a ship in their backyard or not. It sort of feels like we have a ship in our backyard because there's so many things we happening. We all have a ship <laughs> in our backyard. Yeah, that's the elevator pitch. Ann Schindler, First Coast News, on your side. Well, the filmmakers say they will remain on the project until the entire ship is removed off the coast of Brunswick.